polymorphing is really about taking um, getting the most out of your your Linux infrastructure by taking security to the next level, flipping it from uh, reactive, which is what most customers do today, to a proactive state and stopping attacks before they start. Hi, this is Sonia Bhartia and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Philip Cockrell, VP of Global Commercial Sales at Polyverse Corp. Philip, first of all, welcome to the show. And today uh, it's uh, SUSECON Digital. We are supposed to be at SUSECON Physical in Europe, but because of this crisis, everything has changed. Uh, and today Polyverse is uh, making some announcements at the event. Uh, which is about bringing polymorphic to uh, SUSE Enterprise Linux. Talk a bit about, first of all, when you talk about polymorphic, uh, can you talk quickly, what does it really mean? Yeah, polymorphing is really about taking, um, getting the most out of your, your Linux infrastructure by taking security to the next level, flipping it from uh, reactive, which is what most customers do today, to a proactive state and stopping attacks before they start. By leveraging polymorphing, customers can um, really reduce the memory-based attack vector uh, on on their enterprise uh, Linux. And so, for for uh, Polyverse, uh, by bringing more support uh, in terms of additional distributions that we support, we're enabling customers to increase their security footprint as they flip that reactive support um, protection to proactive protection. Yeah, if you look at Linux, you know, it's it's known to be much more secure as compared to other platforms. I mean, first of all, there is nothing which is fully secure. Bugs are part of software development processes, and these bugs are the ones that get exploited by bad actors to, to kind of, you know, find any vulnerability to that. So, but it is relatively secure. Uh, but if you look at, you know, as I was talking to uh, more and more people at Polyverse is that every Linux distribution is the same. The same distribution has been done by hacker where they can look into it and they can exploit it. And, and once they find an exploit, they can just replicate it across millions and billions of machines around there. So what you guys are doing is actually to, to kind of make a tiny bit change in memory. So every system kind of becomes unique so that you cannot, even if you find an exploit, you cannot uh, exploit it throughout or you can you know deploy it across machines so uh, first of all tell me if that is right and and just if it is right just explain a bit how do you add that extra layer of security to Linux yeah so that is correct and uh, I it, it's nice that you're speaking the same language right because uh, because our our challenge is to make sure that our uh, customers can understand that and that we can help customers again, convert that uh, reactive to proactive security. And uh, the way it works is, is we've developed uh, a custom uh, compiler tool chain that leverages the, the power and build, uh, build of the way that open source projects do that uh, um, and build their, their software packages, uh, but injects entropy and uniqueness. And so we're built on this principle of diversity and trans transitioning from the monoculture of how um, code and applications are typically created, to this diversity-based, um, th this diversity-based uh, code creation platform. And, and this is all automated, right? It's not like somebody has to go and refactor the code manually, because you're talking about thousands of uh, virtual machines running there. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, everything is completely automated and we're not actually changing any code, right? We're doing it at compile time, not at code creation time. So for us, that's an important distinction because that means that our code is, uh, any, any code that has been polymorphed or packages that have been polymorphed are binary compatible with every other um, distribution that you're getting from from the open source community and it's the exact same code the only change and distinction is that we've injected that um, binary diversity into the into the memory footprint uh, which which means that attackers or people with nefarious can, intent cannot go in and exploit um, uh, vulnerabilities and take them and then leverage that that same exploit across an environment to move laterally and, and take over an entire environment. 
and then you know steal steal uh, precious information. And since you come from SUSE world, so you are also very ver well versed with the Linux world. Uh, when we look at other operating system like let's say Windows, it's more or less like a user facing. You know, this is the first you know th that's the first line of defense where user is act actually interacting with the system. Versus when you look at a lot of Linux based you know systems, they are more like powering the back end. You know, all the services that we use, whether you talk about Uber or NASA or whatever you know CERN or Everything is literally running on Linux, but they are running in the back, so they are not exposed to user. So the the kind of you know um, uh, attack surface that they get is less, but that doesn't mean they are fully you know as we discussed earlier secure. So in the SUSE world, when you live there, what kind of challenges you saw customers were facing that even we don't hear about in press most of the time? Uh, uh, from security point of view, that you uh, you were so compelled and you were so motivated that you joined a Polyverse. So I want to understand that security side of Linux that we don't hear about. Thank you for that question. Actually, um, you know, one of the things that that I saw, of course, working at SUSE and and being around open source for a long time, right? I was I've been interested in open source since uh, the mid 1990s. And um, looking around that, I've seen over that time the, the pervasiveness of open source really take over. And now um, there's the saying that uh, open source is eating the world, right, or eating, uh, eating software. And uh, that's definitely true, right? Now you see open source everywhere, uh, all the way from wearable devices to powering uh, uh, networks and cell towers and data centers and using in the cloud. So despite the fact that um, Linux and open source are not sitting at right in front of the user, that doesn't necessarily mean that the surface area is completely reduced. Actually now, compared to 15, 20 years ago, you see even more surface area is covered by Linux and open source solutions. And um, what, what motivated me to come to Polyverse um, and, and join this great organization was that the technology that we offer helps reduce that by uh, 80%, because 80% of the, the vulnerabilities um, and, and really the most lethal ones are memory-based. If I think back to even just a couple of years ago, we, we had uh, what I call a cancel Christmas event um, in, in the open source world, and that was Spectre and Meltdown. And if you look at Spectre and Meltdown, they're, they're um, memory-based vulnerabilities that, that um, uh, exploit memory memory flaws, and polymorphing actually um, defends against Spectre variants. So for me, working in the uh, in the open source world and working closely with customers and partners at the time, we were working around the clock. And and I'm I'm in the commercial side of things, uh, and my colleagues in engineering were were burning the candles at both ends, working with partners and customers to try to solve these issues and um, we literally had, had customers that were canceling their Christmas events with with um, with their uh, families and I just think about that and think okay what if you had that time back right so um, for me one of the big motivating factors was you know I'll never get Christmas 2018 back uh, but I can certainly keep the Christmases going forward and, and have those times with my family and um, when, when Alex, our, our CEO of, of Polyverse, talks about changing the world, I think about that and being able to give customers and partners and our, you know, anyone using open source time back, right? That's changing the world. And if you look at, since you mentioned Inspector Meltdown, it's kind of, you know, a kind of family of, you know, exploits, not just one exploit. But polymorphing actually kind of fully protects you against that because what you are doing is, uh, instead of re being reactive, is that uh, the the way you change, uh, uh, I mean, I'm using the word change, you are literally not changing, that it, you actually don't, the, the, the security teams don't have to lose their sleep at night because even if there are new attacks, their systems are kind of relatively protected. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. You know, I was on a call uh, just two weeks ago where we're doing a bunch of uh, customer outreach and I was talking to a customer um, uh, and he's a, a CISO of a major manufacturing organization. 
And I was testing something with him that, that we uh, received in a, a report that, that's freely available online that said, if a customer has a, or if a large organization has a security breach, that it costs them about $3 million. And I said, yeah, this is what we hear in the environment uh, or out in the market. Is that also what you hear? And he said, actually, Philip, uh, if we have a security breach that results in downtime, it's $3 million every 15 minutes. So for me, that really hit home because at that moment, when you have uh, a security breach that causes outages for you know hours, that's that's a lot of money. And that changes people's lives, right? That changes livelihoods of of companies, and then that boils always down to the individual employees. And if we can uh, help um, by creating a proactive security layer for these organizations, then that helps us improve the quality of life of all of those employees. And that's something that we're definitely set out to do here uh, at Polyverse. Right, so which also mean that, you know, typically what happens is that every time there is a CVE out there, uh, the security teams rush to patch everything immediately, you know, no matter what. Uh, especially in this time of COVID-19, where you cannot even go to your data center for a lot of reasons, you're stuck in your home. But polymorphing kind of, I would not say that it you can ignore those patches, but you don't really have to lose your sleep because you don't have to rush to patch it because you do know that your system is still protected. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, that's absolutely true. So one of the things that we're talking to customers and, and just the market about in general is that by, by leveraging te uh, technology that polymorphing uh, for, for Linux offers, uh, customers can switch from a panic patching mode or patching for security to patching for hygiene, right? So we, we can put patching, we can put patch cycles back into uh, predictable phases, and then that allows customers to be able to have peace of mind uh, at night because they don't need to worry about their environment uh, having having issues. Now let's talk about today's announcement that you you are uh, announcing uh, Suzy Linux Enterprise support. Uh, first of all, have you been offering support for Suzy already, or this is the first time you are extending support to Suzy? So this is the first time. Uh, imagine me uh, coming to uh, Polyverse and uh, saying, "Okay, well, you know, Suze is a is a leader in enterprise Linux, and um, I'm running commercial sales at, at Polyverse. I need to have Suze as a supported offering. We want to partner with Suze. It's uh, uh, the original uh, distribution of enterprise Linux, and uh, clearly an important partner for Suze. So." Uh, it's very important that we add support so that SUSE customers uh, can take advantage of this great technology. They are a very big player when it comes to a lot of mission critical workloads. So how critical is polymorphing for SUSE users? I think that uh, it's it's really critical, not only in mission critical applications like, like SAP, and uh, as you mentioned, SUSE is running a lot of mission critical applications, but also in um, SUSE is also really uh, has has a very strong foothold uh, in the embedded space, right? With with medical manufacturers, storage and analytics manufacturers, and those those manufacturers have their devices all over the world, uh, not just in the technology footprint, but in hospitals, in in research centers, uh, in every type of customer you can imagine, and. If we can help SUSE and then also those customers reduce their attack surface and um, help offer a proactive security approach to those uh, critical workloads, then that's back to our philosophy of, of wanting to change the world and, and make the world a better place. When, when we look at uh, Linux, you know, it's like SUSE is there, Red Hat is there, uh, Fedora is there, Debian is there, Ubuntu is there. You know, it's like, you know, as you earlier mentioned, you know, the, it's used almost everywhere. So are you working only with select players or are you offering uh, polymorphing only for select uh, Linux distributions or is it available, you know, uh, across distributions in the Linux world? Our, our solution is really cross-platform. Uh, we're focusing on a couple of uh, distributions that we see customers using um, either in the cloud or, or in embedded devices. 
uh, or in or in data centers, right? We're we're trying to make sure that customers who are using open source can secure from the edge to the core to the cloud. Um, in order to do that, we've got some primary focuses for distribution support, so Red Hat, SUSE, uh, but then also uh, community supported distributions like Ubuntu and uh, CentOS. Uh, but as you as you noted from our website, we also support Fedora, Alpine, we have uh, and Debian. We have a large um, range of of support for various distributions, and that's really because of the uh, power and uh, pervasiveness of our build system. Right, uh, we have one of the largest build systems in the world, uh, and uh, we're we're doing that uh, by leveraging the power of the public cloud. Uh, it's a born in the cloud. Um, uh, creation and our technology is uh, our technology leverages the cloud to uh, create this uh, great great package uh, these this great software offering for our customers Philip thank you for taking time out today and sitting down here and even if remotely and talk just discussing you know the polymorphing and you know the support you're extending to Susie and I look forward to talk to you again uh, soon thank you